Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for this installment of the Virtual Neocon. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to define your personal brand um, using social media. I'm Leslie Eichelberger, and I have a team of presenters here with me today. Um, we're gonna to talk first about um, brand and why it's important, and then I'll be passing to Ben Dossout, um, who's going to talk to you a little bit about how we apply our brand. Um, and then Meredith O'Brien will be taking the reins, and Meredith will talk a little bit about um, social media and how we apply the Han brand in the social media space. And then we're gonna take this even more personal, and Adam Simmons is going to help you figure out how you use your um, company's brand um, in combination with your own unique personality to really drive um, home some sales and engagement. So that is our team this morning. We're super excited that you joined us and we're gonna go ahead and get started. The first thing I like to level set and just chat with folks about when we are thinking about a topic like this is why brand is so important. Um, likely your dealerships and, and the other companies you engage with all have, a ver have spent a significant amount of time and money thinking about brand, um, how they wanna show up for customers and how they can be most meaningful to customers. And it's all centered around this idea that a brand helps you to connect and occupy a very specific place in the consumer's mind. And that's why people spend so much time and energy invested in what a brand should look like. At Han, we've also spent quite a bit of time thinking about our brand, and you should have noticed over the course of the last two and a half years, a significant shift in the way our brand shows up in the market. Um, and I wanted to walk you through real quickly the work that we've done. The first thing we did was, um, if you can go back, Alyssa, to that last image that was there, there we go. The first thing we did was to define the market. And the market, um, really was helping us to drive and understand where there's opportunity. Who are our customers? What kind of real estate do they occupy? How many employees do they have? Um, where can we find the customers that are most meaningful to us? Um, so the next step we did was really to dig in and understand and think about that customer more. And you'll have likely heard um, your Han salesperson or even a Han brand representative like myself or Ben talk about our green customer, our peach customer, our yellow customer. And what that means to us is the green customer is really that mid-market customer. Our peach customer is someone in the public sector and the yellow customer is someone whose business is a little bit more transactional in nature. And we really needed to understand who those customers were and how they go about making purchase decisions in order to define what our brand should look like. So that's the next step that we took, was to define a path to purchase for these customers. And what we found out was that there were 26 specific moments in the purchasing um, process that help a customer determine um, how to interact with a brand, what brand they want to purchase, and that we needed to show up for these moments if we want to be in the consideration set. Why is that so important? Well, if we know how the customer is shopping and what is driving their behavior, then that helps us to define what our brand should look like. And that's exactly what we did next. We came up with a new strategy and a new approach to our brand. The most visible of these is likely um, our tagline. Hopefully you've seen this in the marketplace um, where we started to say, Han, make your space work. And that Make Your Space Work tagline is really a summary of what we um, mean of the rest of the brand work that we've done by creating a new brand purpose, new brand promise, and these principles that we want to live into for our brand. As our team members like Adam and Meredith are thinking about how to apply the brand to our social media or to their own personal um, social media sites, it's really important that they continue to anchor and pull back into this idea of make your space work and the things that we say are important, which is putting the customer first, products that are made to last, um, the ability to do things right for our customers, and the importance of our dealer network through this idea of collaborative expertise. We've spent a great deal of time in the last couple of years amplifying this brand, advertising, and talking to consumers. And we've done that um, you are on the right track. You can go right to that slide, Alyssa. 
really just landing on this idea of showing up and making that brand sing wherever the customer needs us. You'll see in this path to purchase that inspiration is that first step. This may be long before the customer is even really thinking about office furniture yet. They might just have in the back of their mind, um, someday I'd like to have a new office. And they may be on Pinterest or they may be on social media and see a picture that, that um, sings to them or speaks to them and they might save that um, for some time down the road. But as you go through, you can see that there's lots of moments where it's important for us to connect with them and just as important as it is for our brand to connect with these individuals or these potential customers at these moments, it's important for you as a salesperson and for your um, businesses to connect with the customers at these moments too. And that's really what our intent is today, is to help you see how you can connect the brand of your dealership, the Han brand to your own personal, um, to your own personal social media. And Ben, we're going to take it from here for just a moment and really tell you how we brought this new brand, this new lively brand to life. And this is what Meredith and Adam helped to connect our customers to. Great. Thanks, Leslie. Yeah, um, I can take the take this to the next step. So just from a historical standpoint, all of the steps that Leslie just explained, where we really took the time to research what our customers' path to purchase looked like, um, what their needs were along that path uh, really became a, a way for us to cool down what that message might be and, and how that how we should be presenting that to them within new places of media that Han had really not gone before. So what you're seeing here is where we took the brand knowledge uh, and brought it into a little bit more of the, the creative look and feel for the fresh focus and flexible campaign. Um, Han has a permanent brand that is that is something you'll see forever and ever that will be here long after my time here at the Han company and it will be a, a Han green logo and a certain probably tone that the company stands for that will be something that resonates in everything we do. We also try to stay fresh and that's very, very important and you'll probably want to be thinking about that as well in your own personal brand. Um, there's things that we that are just pillars for the Han company, but then we can also bring to life new fresh ideas that really match what our products are starting to do within the marketplace. So that was the challenge that we went through. You can kind of see here, we start to show a little bit different, more lifestyle shots, uh, people interacting with our product, uh, some products that actually sort of intermingled with other graphic treatments. And these are all things that we start to leverage across everything that Han does in our marketing perspective, in our marketing uh, sort of spectrum it really does drive what we want to be how we want to look consistent in the marketplace and also be relevant and, and fresh so this is something that like I said we we will hit this in print ads social media email advertising um, even some of our you know there's some training efforts there's things like the showroom anywhere that a customer might come into contact with a marketing message from Han it's going to look very consistent and also be fresh and new as we go. So this is a little bit of an example of how we brought that to life. I think we can go to the next slide as well, Alyssa. Really, and, and this really pays off that idea what Leslie just got into, make your space work. We want everything within our brand to ladder up to make your space work. Really just this idea that fuels the, that we fuel the moments that matter. And hopefully you're starting to see a little bit of an attitude in our brand that more than work happens at the workplace. We really wanted to play on that uh, emotional uh, area, green space, where we felt like we hadn't gone before as a brand. So we're hopefully really starting to pay that off. And like Leslie said, hopefully you're seeing this over the last year and a half to two years as well. Great, thanks so much, Ben. Um, again, my name is Meredith O'Brien and I'm the Associate Digital Marketing Manager at Han. And one of my primary responsibilities is managing the official Han brand social media accounts. So that includes everything from the branding to the content creation to community management and even customer service. And I really use all of that to create our overarching social media strategy, which is what I'm going to share with you today. And specifically, I'm going to share the tools that I use on the Han company social media accounts. And I will also explain how you can leverage these best practices to create your own strategy for your own social media accounts and to ultimately define your personal brand. 
Um, so let's dive right into this slide, which is our goals and objectives for social media. And really, this is a high-level overview of what my goals are for the Han brand social media accounts. And what's really interesting to note is that these business objectives can align to your personal objectives as well. So for instance, my first objective is simple. It's a relatively common KPI, which is to grow the brand. Um, and that's measured with metrics such as number of followers. So pretty straightforward. We all want more followers at the end of the day. Um, and of course, having a large audience can be important, but really what I think is more important is having an engaged audience. So that leads me to number two, which is turning those customers into advocates. Are you putting out content that your audience is liking and commenting on? And at the same time, are you taking the time to respond back to your audience as well? Think of it as not just a one-way street. You're really trying to build a partnership between you and your followers. And then number three, at the end of the day, are you getting conversions? Whether your conversions are clicks or maybe they're email signups uh, from your website, are you ultimately driving those leads and those sales? And then of course, number four, are you retaining your customers? Are you putting out content frequently enough? And are you putting out content that's also relevant to your consumers? So really that means you need to think about who exactly your audience is and what type of content is resonating with them. Um, and really to hit all of these goals, you need to understand your audience's wants so you can properly provide the solutions that they need. Um, so for the next slide, Alyssa, I will dive into my content strategy for Han. And this is where you literally break down the content that you're going to share with your audience. So I think a good rule of thumb is think about a day in your life. Think about what is your mission on a daily basis, whether it's professionally or personally. Um, consider not only what you can share, but also what you want to share with your followers. So for instance, this is a snippet of what my content strategy looks like for Han. Uh, you'll see because we are a very uh, product focused business, products and spaces are the majority of the content that I plan to share with our audience. Um, and this includes new product launches, uh, legacy products, which are the products um, at Han that we say are in need of maybe a little bit of extra love, um, as well as the different verticals that we serve. So that could include the education space, healthcare, et cetera. Uh, but really, something to note from, uh, from this graph is that only 60% of my content strategy is products and spaces. Uh, the other 40% is really showcasing what our personality is. And I want to display more of that lifestyle content, uh, such as maybe design heavy content and posts about our company story. So that can include uh, those blog posts that you're seeing on any of our channels, employee spotlights. Um, this year we've introduced two new campaigns. One of them is corporate social responsibility, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and then even some fun extras such as events, contests, and more. So that all falls within these buckets. Um, and really when building this, consider the cadence of when exactly you're going to post. How many days a week makes sense for you based on the volume of content that you actually can produce. Um, so really organize your thoughts into a strategy like this to hold yourself accountable um, and to create a consistent schedule that's gonna catch your audience's attention as well. Um, and then for this next slide, this is going to be our mood board, which is one of my favorites because personally I'm a, I'm a very visual person and for me images are more effective than text. So if you're very similar, I totally recommend going old school, create a mood board, uh, use visuals that describe your personality. Uh, really think about what makes you unique. We are all special and one of a kind, so go out there and own it. Uh, and what do you want your content to look like on social? Really think about that and create a mood board or cut up a magazine uh, or uh, create a folder on your desktop where you can organize images that inspire you and then go out there and add your own twist to it. And then for the next slide, this is going to be bringing our content to life. So when you're bringing your content to life, define these three items, your visual, your voice, and your vibe. 
uh, and use these guidelines to describe what your personality is. So for Han, uh, when you're looking at an image on one of our platforms, I want you to feel that Han is a genuine and relatable company. And when you're reading the copy in one of our captions, I want you to think that the voice that you're hearing is confident and conversational. And then when you're looking at our overall feed and our overall profile on one of our channels, I want you to say that we're honest and engaging. And then I'm gonna tie all this into this last slide, which is a simple checklist. So create a simple checklist and ask yourself these questions when you're creating content uh, to ensure that it adds value while also being true to your brand. So ask yourself, how do you want to look? Uh, how do you want to sound? Uh, how do you want to inspire your audience? And what exactly do you want to inspire your audience to do? And really, uh, these are tips and tricks that I use on a daily basis to manage the Han social media channels. Um, and I hope you'll use these tools as well to, uh, to better define your own personal brand. Um, and next, I'll hand it off to Adam Simmons, and he's going to show you how he represents the Han brand uh, using his own vibe on his personal social media. Thank you, Meredith, and also thank you, Ben, and thank you, Leslie, for, um, for all of your insights so far. Um, so yeah, so as Meredith mentioned, I want to talk a little bit about personal brand and building that personal brand. Um, and, and I guess first I'll start off by saying, you know, uh, it's so important to know how a company, so Leslie and Ben, how we envision our company brand and that strategy and, and that feeling. And then with Meredith also tying that together with those of us who are on the ground so that it's this cohesive message that's outbound, that is authentic, that still takes into the account the company that you work for, their values, their, their mission, uh, and so on and so forth. But on a micro level, our personal brand shows up in everything that we do. And I guess first I'll just um, you know define it. So the textbook definition of a personal brand it is the conscious and intentional effort to create and influence public perception as an authority. Now, most of us are in sales, we are account managers, we are designers, we are a number of things. Um, and in this increasingly digital world, we're all visible um, in, in ways that perhaps we haven't been before, or we need to be more visible uh, in ways than we haven't before via social media and other technology channels. Um, so what does all of this mean, I guess, about a personal brand? Well, it basically means that you are your brand. Uh, how you promote you matters, and it is perfectly okay to do that, to promote you. Um, I think so many of us oftentimes get nervous about either uh, being too self-promotional, right, or being too um, maybe even, you know, egotistical or narcissistic or whatever. Well, guess what? It is okay to be any of those things so long as it is authentic to you. So promoting yourself is key to building a personal brand for those of us who are out in the marketplace. Uh, so let's see if you'll move to the next slide for me. So in, in all of that, let's get to know you guys a little bit. And I know that this platform doesn't necessarily allow for raising hands and, and everyone sort of piping in. So I'll go through these uh, bullet points uh, as a way that I always sort of like to engage with audience when we talk about building brand. And so the first question is, you know, how many of you have a social media profile? I'm going to bet that every single person on this, this uh, webinar does in fact have a social media profile. Um, but just for some statistics, 82% uh, of the US population has a social media profile and interacts with it on an almost daily basis. So that's a lot, right? And then I guess, you know, what does your social media profile say about you? This goes to all of what we've been talking about with respect to our brand and, and how it shows up and, and what it means. And I ask that question and I often give people this, um, comparison so to or, or this suggestion to look back at your last three or four social media posts even if they've been personal ones and think about what that says about you does it say that you love dogs does it say that you have a family does it say that you love to travel does it say that you've even perhaps had a bad day 
Um, all of those things are important into building trust with consumers and making you more um, authentic, approachable, valued, trusted, all of those things. Um, whether we know it or not, they, they present a picture of us to our audiences. And then with that, you know, which platforms do people prefer? There are so many of them. And my advice to people is always to use what you interact with the best, what is um, easiest oftentimes, um, and where you feel more comfortable. So for instance, I use LinkedIn, I use Instagram, and I use Facebook. I'm a little too old for Snapchat, and I'm not cool enough for TikTok. Um, but uh, those are some additional platforms. So there's a lot of different ways that you can build a brand and show up in, in the social media world. And then the next thing is really meant to be more of a question for you as you look at your social media footprint uh, in the world. Uh, do you have customers or clients that follow you? And I bet that there are a few hands that are going up saying, yes, I do. Some may have more than others. But where you have customers or clients following you, even in a personal context, they are still looking back to what those posts say about you. Again, can they trust you as a salesperson? Can they trust you um, to design and, and your, your artistic eye or any number of other things? So it really does matter what you're saying on your social media platforms. Uh, and for all of those people that follow you, I can assure you they are paying attention. And then lastly, you know, we're talking about social media and all of those things. There are plenty of other ways that we brand ourselves outside of social media. There are plenty of opportunities to do that, whether it be our engagement in community and how we show up there, whether it be print media and how we show up there. There are a number of different ways that we can still continue to build our brand without having to push, you know, post or, or gather a bunch of likes as well. So I encourage people to think about those other ways that may be either more comfortable for them to show up, um, but still allow for them to build a brand out in their communities. Uh, so Alyssa, next slide, please. All right. So. Obviously, the question with all that, especially if you're newer to social media or newer to branding, or even if you've been at this for a while, is sort of, you know, how do I get started? It can be overwhelming. It can be fraught with anxiety. Um, you may need therapy along the way. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, but how and where do I start? I think it's important for you to uh, not bite off the whole sandwich, to do uh, this in, in meaningful, measured ways. Meredith outlined a really great plan of things to think about as you um, begin your journey of, of branding and social media and, and so on. But it is important that you do have a digital presence. I have talked to a few people who have said, no, I don't have a LinkedIn profile. I'll use that as an example. And what they don't realize is while they may not have one or may not see the value there, there is extreme value my network on linkedin has brought both job opportunities it has brought project opportunities i have won projects off of linkedin and my presence there so it does matter whatever that digital presence is it is important to have one um, and then to engage with that digital audience that uh, that is created around you uh, as meredith mentioned you want to engage with them you want to start to build um, a rapport through that social media platform, that brand that you're trying to achieve. You're building it with every post, with every engagement, with every comment. Um, and it is important that you engage with those things. And then I always ask people to think about the who, what, where, and why of your content. Who am I posting it for? What am I posting or what do I want to say? Where am I posting it by way of what platform? And why? What is the whole point of this post? Is it to get attention? Is it to drive sales? Is it to promote a message? What is the why of it? And I think if you can ask yourself and answer those things in that fashion, then it'll make this, this journey much easier for you. I also will continue to say, and you will hear me say this repeatedly time and time again, to be authentic. Um, that is be yourself. I think we all are sort of coached that we can have this business persona and this personal persona. 
Well, I think you can throw that thinking out the window these days because I think people want to do business with the personal side of yourself, that authentic side of yourself. Um, and for me, for me, my authentic self is is humorous. Um, I sometimes say the wrong things, <laughs> um, you know, and 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 so on and so forth. But that has created for me an audience of people that enjoy that. Um, and and I always will preach be authentic uh, in whatever way that is for you. I'll also say that appearance matters, and I say that to say when you are posting. Um, images and, and things like that, you always want to think about what the other person is going to see. So if you're posting a professional aimed post on LinkedIn and your shirt is all messy and you're all wrinkled or you don't have shoes on, you have to think about what that audience is seeing. So in all things, appearance matters. And then lastly, as I said at the beginning of this, promote, 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 promote you because you are building a brand underneath the brand of the companies that you work for. And it's important too, I, I use this analogy when we were talking through all of the, our presentation today, when I say promote, promote, promote you and you're building a brand, um, I think about it as a sports uh, analogy uh, by way of the connection of you to the company that you work for. This sports analogy, we go to, football games and we wear a jersey for a team and we get so excited and we root for the team and we hope that they win and we may post, we may go spend money at the stadium, we may do all of those things because there's so much energy and pride around this team that we're going to see or participate with. It should be no different for the companies that we work for. It should be no different for the jobs that we do, right? We want that same energy, that same passion, that same uh, pride in, in showing up for our companies and with our companies um, as we do for ourselves. So I just wanted to say that. And I think I might be done. Oh, no, I got one more. All right. <laughs> um, so let's go back to that checklist that Meredith created. And I'll kind of breeze through this. Um, but again, when we post, we want to ask ourselves, do we look personal, lived in, vibrant? So the image to the side of that for me is um, vibrant because I added a color filter to it. Um, lived in, that's me, uh, and personal. That's me, I think, at my best, smiling. Um, it's a profile shot. Uh, so, uh, and I don't know if I shaved that day or not. So maybe that's why I added the filter. And then secondly, as we post, do we sound smart, helpful, grounded, um, and I used a LinkedIn post that I, I posted a few days ago where we were talking about a, a new product that we have and where it shows up in a specific market. And I was able to check off these boxes as I did that. And it was really helpful for me to say this post does, in fact, sound smart. It is helpful and it is grounded to the way our brand wants to show up uh, in our markets. And then lastly, do we inspire our customers and trade partners to, to bring it home, as Ben mentioned, to make your space work? That's sort of how we want to all tie this together. And so the image to the right is me with one of our branded coffee cups. And yes, I wear pajamas. I know it's old school. Um, so, um, but that for me was a post as well, where I was trying to tie in that message of make your space work to something very personal for me, which was having coffee in the morning. And then above it, in the small image, that's a way where I was able to promote a product that we have, a technology application that we have, as well as to infuse my own personal self into that marketing piece, which I did not get approved by Ben and Leslie, but I hope that I didn't get into too much trouble for that. Um, so guys, I hope that this has been really helpful. I'm trying to land the plane for you. Um, we do have to think about branding from a company perspective to a personal perspective. I'm on the ground every day, so I really rely on that messaging from our, our company and, and from Leslie and Ben and Meredith to help me define my own personal brand on the ground. And so far, it's been a, it's been a wonderful experience. So I hope that all of you guys can can have the same experience. Start posting, follow me on LinkedIn, uh, and let's uh, let's build a community together.